Hey, did you know there's a lot more going on right now at our websites? Are you watching all four of them? If not, check them out. There's a list right here. We got three YouTube channels and one audio-only channel for your enjoyment. So come on and dig in and see all the stuff we do here at the North American Snow Queen Palace. Hello, guys. Welcome back. It's uh, Libby and French Train. Today we're going to talk about requested by Jonathan Ung. The topic is karma. That's spelled K-A-R-M-A. -A, karma, which actually comes from Hinduism, which has um, many modern interpretations of the word karma. But we're going to try to explain the most official Definition of karma. To understand this concept of karma, we're going to have to explain um, positive and negative karma. We all develop over our lifetime a, uh, which is partially responsible for a life chart. Now this is where it gets fun because, um, the Vegas never talk about life charts specifically, and neither do the Sanskrit, although they do talk about the Kasha records. So, um, we're going to try to keep the symbol. Um, first of all, no expression that um, is often applied to karma. What comes around goes around. What does that mean? Well, when it comes around, goes around means is that. If you do good to somebody else, it's going to come back to you. It sounds like the rule of ready, isn't it? Well, actually, the rule of ready definitely involves karma, but that's, so we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, as I said, everybody in each life has, starts out with a karma score. Okay? You want to think of karma score, think of it like credit score. Okay? We're going to call it karma score, except there's no karma reporting agencies. So it's an arbitrary number uh, for this explanation. It doesn't really officially exist as such, but well, we start with what we know and try to apply real um, everyday world understandings to help people understand it better because that's the way it works. It always works out better that way. If we can explain it to you, in everyday ideologies that you might be able to understand it better. Karma is, for this example, is, is, your, is your karma score, okay? If you do good throughout your life, you will have a higher karma score. And if you do bad and you act like a real flaming asshole, your karma score is going to be in a, a much lower um, and actually will start to approach negative. Well, obviously mother and father guy would like to see us work on achieving a positive score, but to do that means that we have to work towards the higher goal. Now, in the case of societies that do not talk about people returning for our next life, Karma score is almost always referred to as if you got one chance to do it, that's it. And then your life is carved in stone and then based on that you're going to either go to see the illusion fields or you're going to see something worse than death. Okay, that's... And you talk about the Christianity fields of all the different subgroups of Christianity, you'll hear things like, you know, um, people going to hell and people going to heaven. The same thing with Greek and Roman mythology. It's it's just the way it is. Some cultures don't believe that you have the ability to redeem yourself, whereas other cultures um, believe that you can um, make it right in your next life. Me and Michelle believe in the second class, such as is if you do something wrong in a prior life or you fail to achieve something in your prior life which consists of negative karma, you will have that negative karma 
um, what's called residual negative karma come over into this life. It's not meant as punishment. It's meant that it's a thing that you need to work on to overcome. Um, if that sounds very much like that you can always come back and try again, that's right. You can always take your um, concept of the karma score and take it from a lower rating to a higher rating by improving and overcoming the things that gave you a lower karma score last time. So if like in the last life you were you were selfish, greedy, um, egomaniac, uh, possibly abusive to people and to animals, not that I particularly approve any of that, mind you, especially the last one, but well, okay, maybe those are things that you did not work on in your last life. Those things will remain with you in this life. Maybe you're an excessive drinker, alcoholic, drug user. So those negative things are going to affect you now. But the positive residuals will always be there too. Maybe you're very giving. Maybe you're very loving. Uh, maybe you believe that there's good in everybody and that everybody should be respected for their rights and their individualities. That's positive residual karma. We don't really usually talk about positive, but let's take a look at that. The positive traits are, of course, what you want to carry over. But the negative traits are the ones that are going to need work. So those are the ones we focus more on. Is that, as I said, the recent examples I gave. If you turn out that you are just an egomaniac and you think that you're top sirloin and that nobody else matters, or you're abusive, or you're hurtful, you're going to be, unfortunately, in the situation where you might have to deal with that abuse and hurt in this life. Now, one of the things we hear about the concept goes around, comes around, is that we're taught that if you're an asshole, you're going to be treated badly by an asshole. Uh, no, not necessarily, but I can tell you this much. If you're an asshole, you will be, um, okay, cat. If I was an asshole, then obviously I would be, uh, now this is better. Because now I don't have to worry about the cat taking my face shot, my face shot. Uh-huh. It's still can he stuck at me with me a little bit, but now you have to, we've got a small lap to lay on. Okay, so you're going to overcome those limits. So all those things that you learned in the past, the good, the bad, the ugly, they all build onto your next, onto your current life. Remember when Jesus was asked about the man who is blind and the Pharisees asked him and said, what did his family, what did that, what, what did his, you know, what did he mind? Did his family do wrong? That sounds like a creation of karma, doesn't it? But that's not how karma works. That's not the way it works, okay? In most cases, when you do what comes around, goes, goes around, comes around, means just like it says, is that when you are um, doing something bad, yeah, you're going to be punished for that, but you're not going to necessarily always be the victim in the next life. But that doesn't mean you couldn't be. The most important thing is, is that you will be given many, many ways to improve on your negative residuals, to build up um, a way to overcome your limitations. Let's take Michelle's budget for a minute. Uh, and you're saying, what the hell is Michelle's budget got to do with karma? A lot more than you think, okay? Even in this lifetime. Michelle has always struggled to try to keep her head above water. No matter what she does, she's always drowning in debt, okay? Now, this... In this, this year, since December, Michelle has strived very hard to begin to overcome 
her flaws. And every time she thinks she's going to get ahead, she drowns again. And as she keeps going, she gets frustrated and moody and depressed. And you sense it in her last video that she was really disgusted that she could not buy the violin that she wanted to. But the thing, like I told her from looking at her budget is, you can, but then you'll be financially, seriously incapable of paying your um, minus supplies you must have for the house. Like clothing, socks, underwear. Um, that's going to be really, you know, certainly won't be able to buy the eye drops you need. So then you'll basically be sacrificing your well-being and your health to play a musical instrument. A musical instrument is not a high priority item. But like Michelle always said, and she was whining to me off camera, she says, but I can never get ahead. I never can enjoy anything even for my birthday. I haven't had a good birthday present for years. I wanted to buy this because it was something I always wanted to learn. And now I can't do it again because I'm still screwed with my budgets are basically got to be paid. And I just basically, sometimes I just want to throw my hands in the air and go, I quit. Is that negative karma? Or could that become negative karma? The answer is, oh, you betcha. It could be very well become negative karma. The negative karma in this case is to spend the money you don't have to buy something that's not a high priority. It could be very well be a negative karma, which is the lack of financial fiscal responsibility. So what that would mean is, is that the person has to work to remove or that as a problem in this life. And you've got a lifetime to do it. It may have been a carryover from your last lifetime. But once you realize that that's a problem, you can begin the process of saying, is, what can I do differently this time? And I hear. But anyway, the point is, so Michelle has to work on overcoming that fiscal problem that has been plaguing her life. And I don't think it's a new problem either because I know that Michelle has had a hard time looking at the records of um, her prior lives uh, in Montana. She had the same problem in the sense that she was constantly having to deal with her husband's cattle ranch, trying to raise her daughter Abigail, trying to keep the home fires burning literally in the middle of Montana in the, in the wilderness. And so she always had to try to deal with the limited resources presented to her to um, raise the family. So what it means is that it's a karma from the past that has carried over to this life from that life, which from what I can understand has carried on over to that life from prior lives, possibly in prior to her life. I don't remember her name was down, but it's not the point. The, the whole point I'm trying to say is this, it's, it's a karmic issue that has addressed itself over and over again and it's it's frustrating because I know Michelle wants so much to be um, go beyond the limitations of the karma so the first thing that means is that Michelle has to just learn to she can't do certain things and that she has to know I understand the power of no the power of no means just like it sounds like it doesn't mean, oh, well, maybe if I trade this thing off for that thing and I can get it anyway. That's, that is sacrifice. But in this case, it's not the kind of sacrifice that is necessary here. Um, it's, and it also means that there are some times when you have to look at yourself and say, this petition, um, the, this project, this object, it's not feasible for this time, so it should just be 
uh, tabled until uh, a time later on that is practical. Michelle got so upset with the violin because the fact is was is that she wanted to do it two years ago. She had to defer it. And then but two years ago, her finances were much worse than they are now. Now she's making positive inroads. But no matter how you do it, she's still not there yet to the point where she can confidently say and still have money to buy her eye drops and um, the power to enjoy herself. And say, I can buy the violin now. I can buy my eye drops I need now. I can buy the socks and underwears I need now. Um, I, I'm, I've got the ability to finally reach out and go to the next level. She hasn't quite gotten there yet. So when you're dealing with negative karma, which carries on over from a prior life, it's something that um, can become really, really frustrating. Sometimes people, for example, um, when there is the negative karma is what causes things such as obesity and cigarette smoking and excessive drink. The answer is yes, it can be. In fact, uh, these karmic energies are always there. They're going to be part of you. Uh, just like this cat is, I guess. <laughs> um, they're going to be part of you. They're going to be um, They're part of your, your, your background. And so the thing that makes it success is just like when you're dealing with the 12 steps of Alcohol Anonymous is the first thing is you've got to acknowledge you have a problem. And the second thing you have to do is you've got to begin the process of working towards coming to the solution, how to deal with that problem. And once you can come to the solution, once you can say, okay, I have a problem, say with smoking or obesity or overspending, then you can begin the process of saying, okay, that means I need to work on those things to be a well-rounded individual. And that's what makes um, Earth University, as Michelle would call it, really such a very difficult thing. This is not like, you know, there is certainly for some things there are indeed 12-step programs um, to help to deal with the financialness and, uh, and the drunkenness and the cigarette, you know, smoking and all that. And there is indeed programs for that. But when you're talking about karma, I don't really think I've seen uh, anywhere where people have said, uh, even um, I've visited several 12-step programs, I have never heard anyone ever say, is, these things may be carryover from a prior life existence that you have not yet mastered, and they will continue to be there until you master them and take control of them. That's the key you got to take control of them. So that means if you want to become a better person, you have to overcome your um, issued karma. If you want to be, uh, go further in life. Um, because this is where we have to go. How do you overcome negative self-karma? How do you come over negative karma? How do you improve your positive residual karma? Why not? Okay, you might as well improve the good and ameliorate the bad. So that's what we need to do. Well, the first thing is, is that to know what positive karma traits you have are. It's not always clear. Sometimes it's clear. Sometimes it's kind of murky. Uh, for example, you might be smart. You might be have a sense of intellect. But because of reasons that are not clear to you. You can't find out what to excel at because um, you, you just, maybe you've never had a chance to really explore the things that make you, where you can show your um, acumen. On the other hand, sometimes um, you focus on the wrong things in this life that you might, you know, do okay, but for some reason it isn't really, um, really your strength okay so obviously in order to find out what your positive karma traits are is you need to keep exploring them everything about yourself um try new things try new ideas go out there and keep working on them the same applies for negative self karma if for example you have a trouble with smoking cigarettes then maybe you need to look at other ways you can overcome that which is a lot harder then trying to find the things that you're good at is trying to find ways to, to 
stamp out the things that have given you problems. But every person has the ability to do that. Okay? Sometimes it helps to write it down. Just write down all your goals, your strengths, your weakness in a book, a binder, a folder, notebook, whatever. Now you can start to ask yourself questions like, in the case of positive karma, is, am I doing, am I re what am I good at? What things do I excel at? What things do I ex exceed at? Okay. How do the things that I do make me feel? Do they feel make me feel happy and at peace? Or does it make me feel like um, I'm just kind of just treading water? Um, people, you'll be surprised what you find. You might find out that you have a strength from a prior life that um, really speaks to you. Michelle believes in maybe music because music in her life is her father was in the music. Um, he was uh, into the accordion. He was into the organ. Um, she grew up listening to music. She loved music. She still does. But right now she's kind of stressed out. And so she hasn't really put on too many vinyls lately. But um, I think Michelle, that's one of the reasons why she so much was so broken hearted with the violin was because she felt like, she, again, one of her things that she wanted to explore was being deprived from her again. And that sometimes that's the hardest thing when you get into negative residual karma is why does a person feel that way? Um, when, when, when they're doing something and why do they feel sometimes like they're being deprived because they have to make decisions and sometimes the decisions means that she, they have to make sacrifices. Well, if anything is a consolation in the world is today is there's nobody in this world that will ever get everything they want. It's a it's an exercise in in making the best with what you got. For example, Michelle realizes that she certainly could not afford to buy this expensive brand new violin, um, custom made for her by a professional string instrument maker. She realizes that her choices are pretty limited, so she was willing to go with a lower cost um, Chinese made violin um, because of the price is good. Besides, she figured is if, it, if I don't do good with the violin, at least I'm not going to be out like hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for an instrument that clearly doesn't really work for me. Uh, but okay, so for now, the time is, is the first thing is. You're going to be asking me this, and I'm sure this is going through your head. What do you do when you feel frustrated about something not coming to be fruition? Maybe you need to think about why it's not coming to fruition. Maybe it's something that you're, that's probably the hardest thing of all to do to yourself, is to ask yourself that tough question. They say you're your own worst critic. So let's, so let's let the critic have an extra, some extra popcorn and extra butter, and let them go at it because it's going to help you to understand who you are or what you are. Okay? Is what is it that is stopping you from reaching your potential to overcome your negative karma? If you can come up with that, um, you can begin the process of solving it. Remember I told you what one of the requirements under the 12-step program is. The first thing you got to do is you got to acknowledge you have a problem. And you have got to begin the process of overcoming that. It also means, of course, that it's going to take a lot of work, but it definitely takes some belief of a higher power. What in this case, a higher power would be Mother Asana, Father Yahweh, who can help you, and your spirit guide as well, can help you to overcome those things. So if you have, say, for example, um, you can't do it by yourself. It's, it's almost impossible. It's like, Ask anybody who has an alcohol problem. Ask anybody who has a um, tobacco problem or a drug addiction or whatever. It's almost impossible to get over it by yourself. But when you've got the support and the love of friends and family, remember it's like what the Beatles say. I get by with a little help from my friends. Okay? And also, like I said before in the last song, help. You, you, you need that help. you got your spirit guide to help you. That's a great asset. It is a very important asset. 
But that's also, that person also, if you treat them as your friend and respect them as your friend, that also is going to be a godsend tool to help you go further. Now, I mean, I, I can tell you that every single person on this earth is going to have to deal with the, the hardships in their lives. Okay? And everybody has to overcome the negative karma. But they should also at the same time realize that they can work on the positive karma and make it better. All positive karma can be built upon to refine it and to make it a better skill. One of the things that makes a person uh, a, a very well adjusted person, this is going to piss off every single psych psychoanalysis and psychologist and clinical psychologist. But I'm going to tell you something straight out. Do you know what mental illness really is? Mental illness, in the most part, is a fear. It is a fear that you're not going to have control. That is exactly what a lot of the psychosis is. It's a fear that I don't have control. It's a fear I'm going to lose control. Well, here's the secret. Number one, if you know, and that's your fear, then you can begin a process with the help of your loving friends and your case and, and your spirit guide and the love and, and blessings of mother and father God. You can begin to work on overcoming that. Oh yes, God, let's not forget. Yes, your clinical psychologist and psychiatrist can certainly be an asset in that case. It help you to overcome your fears. But you don't want to overcome those fears on your own too. Remember, the 12 step says is I have to admit to myself that I've got a problem and I've got to be willing to work on it. So once you admit, I'm afraid I'm going to lose control for whatever reason, then you can begin to ask yourself is, why do I'm afraid I'm going to lose control? And, and that's how you can build it up from there. So every single person can take that negative self karma, karma, residual karma from the prior lives and improve it and, and their methods of improvement are going to begin the result in your karma score going up some more every life you build upon that because you there's so many lessons to learn in one life you can't learn it all so you've got to come back multiple times if you choose to you always have the choice to decide if you're going to come back for another life or if you're going to stop bother come back because there are remedial programs you can do on the other side. You don't have to physically come to Earth University to do this course. You can do the equivalent of an online course, if you will, from the other side. I mean, you can, you can learn this through a textbook. You can learn this through the equivalent of the computer. But to actually come to Earth and experience it in the field is much, much more enriching and much more powerful because you're learning from personal experience what it is that you need to work on send me an email by the way personally a private email it's l-u-m-i-f-i-n-i-s-t-r-a at gmail.com i'm also on google plus as plus l-u-m-i space f-i-n-i-s-t-r-a and you can talk to me through that means and for now, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.